Also on this day 63, worried they may have to say goodbye to the only way of life they've ever known, the psychological impact of the spill on the children of the Gulf. But now if you look at the animals, I feel very bad for them because it looks like they're floating in chocolate. This is the CBS Evening News with Katie Couric reporting tonight from the Gulf Coast. But up next, the children of the Gulf tell Katie how the disaster is affecting them. There are very strong feelings all over the country about the oil disaster. In our new poll, 41% of Americans say they are bothered by it. 56% say they're downright angry. And here on the Gulf Coast, more than half say they are hurting a lot. Nearly two out of three here say they've been personally affected by the spill, either directly or indirectly. And it's not just adults, but children too. I'm going to tell you, there's no other place in the world like, like this place right here. No other place in the world. It may disappear. For 18-year-old Dylan Becknell and his 14-year-old brother Austin, the Gulf Coast is in their blood. I'm always on the water. All I do is hunt and fish, that's my life. And if I wouldn't be able to do that, I'd, I don't know what would happen. I mean, that's what keeps me out of trouble, is the hunting and the fishing. And the family business, citrus groves that they've owned for seven generations, depends on the water too. Knowing that that oil is gonna come into there and kill everything that's in there, that's just, it's hard to stomach. Robin Drury's dad was a shrimp boat captain. Now he cleans up oil for BP. He, he loves the shrimp. He's been doing that all his life. And he just doesn't, he's, he doesn't act the same. He's kind of sad. Others worry what may be around the corner. I'm sort of scared because if we have a hurricane, we're losing like most of our marsh. And then our marsh sort of saves us from having a hurricane. It protects you. Yeah. If we would have a hurricane, then most of all of our homes would be gone. After all, Julia and her brother already lost a home because of Katrina. Makes you grow up pretty fast, doesn't it? Kind of. It's, it's a big reality check because, you know, once you think it's all better from Katrina, everything was just starting to really make a big turn. Everything was getting better. And then boom. And then boom. Anybody feeling like... Depressed or Dr. Irwin Redlener of Columbia University is here to exactly assess the psychological damage and help provide resources for this twice battered community. This latest disaster, a slow and painful one. The impact, the sadness and the depression and the anxiety is very, very different. It's, this is probably more like it was during the Dust Bowl in the 1930s when people had to literally leave their homes and never come back. And for children, this kind of unsettled uncertainty is extremely anxiety producing. Leaving behind their heritage, their culture, their lives. That's something these kids hope they'll never have to do. Thank you for the lemonade. If you had a chance to talk to the CEO of BP, Tony Hayward, what would you say to him? I think what he said was he wants his life back, if I heard right. Or we want our lives back because we don't get to do any of the fun And things. more fallout from the spill. I spoke to the executive director of the Plaquemines Parish Community Care Center, and she told me there's been an increase in domestic violence and in substance abuse among adults. 